And it starts and runs after Skrill went for a bunch of different stuff. It actually sounds pretty dizzy. Probably going to need to adjust the valves on it. Got a little tick, but we'll see. It's running. Had to do a lot of little BS to it. The wiring was one. The starter needed to do brushes and everything and that thing. The carb was dumping gas out of it once I fixed the wiring. Then come to find out it's supposed to be a 6 volt. It wasn't a 6 volt. It's, somebody had converted it to a 12 volt with a 12 volt generator at some point in time. So luckily enough the guys at Napa took the 6 volt battery back and swapped me out for a 12 volt. Uh, sounds pretty decent. Fired right up. Still got a had to rebuild the distributor on it. New points, condenser, soak the adv automatic advance in some oil. It was actually pretty free, but cleaned it up good. New points, new condenser, retimed it, new cap, new rotor, new wires. Wires were fried. Uh, I guess next up, I need to fill up flush out the tranny and the rear end finish doing that dump some diesel in there run it for a while the radiator was already full on this thing uh, then the next step is I'll mess around with the front end loader probably change the fluid on that need to replace the hoses on it they're, they're pretty well I don't even want to try them really I mean this thing this one here it's pretty well corroded. That one's not bad. That one's pretty bad. The rest of them ain't horrible. That one's okay. Uh, these ones, th this one I'll probably change. These other ones look like they've been changed recently. And got a fixed uh, weld on the uh, bucket. It's broken off on one side at the bottom where it attaches over here it's I have to line that thing back up and weld it up there and probably put a plate on the inside to reinforce it where it's busted out it's not a real heavy duty bucket you can tell it's bent up pretty good but it's a bucket tires are a little dry cracked back ones are about almost slick they're not as high as I'd like them to be. The uh, seat's almost rusted through. There is rusted through in spots. That right fender over there is pretty wobbly down to the bottom. Kind of pull that thing off and check it out. Oil pressure gauge doesn't work. Ammeter says it doesn't work, but I just checked the charging system and we're charging revved up about 13 and a half, 13.6 volts. That's good for me. Tech don't work. Uh, don't know if the water temperature gauge works. I haven't run it really hot enough to get it hot yet. We'll find out later. I pulled the pulled the line for the oil pressure gauge, and it's it's squirting oil out pretty good, so it works fairly decent. Got to replace some Zerk fittings up on the loader here. I've already replaced a couple of them. Got to do these top ones up here. I've already replaced the bottoms down on the cylinders. I don't know how much fluid this front end holds there. The hydraulics inside the loader frame. Got to do that. Haven't even tried the loader yet. Not real concerned about it at this point in time. Just happy I got it running. Fixed all the wiring on it got to bundle it up secure it good ended up putting a ballast resistor in there up under the battery box there for the correct coil how i got to thinking about why it's a 12 volt i pulled the coil off because i didn't have any didn't have nothing coming out of that coil at all 
and uh, tried jumping it off the negative side and it still didn't get nothing out of it. So I pulled the bracket off and it said it was a 12 volt coil and it looked like it'd been on there for a long time. And I got to thinking, well, why in the hell would they put a 12 volt coil on here? It sure as hell didn't come with that. But like I said, it was caked pretty good in, in oil. And it was old standard made in the USA, 12 volt coil. Uh, got to thinking and then I pulled the regulator off and it was a 12 volt regulator. Positive or negative ground regulator. So I'm like, shit, I'm just going to put 12 volt back on there. Sounds fairly decent. Had to pull the carb back off. The instructions had me set the carb float at one height. And got to reading different stuff on the kit and the manual and online and stuff. And it had a different number than what they had for the float height. Because it, it wasn't getting no gas. So I adjusted it. Took it back off because it was dumping gas out. And uh, took it off. Adjusted it to where they said to adjust it to. Again, at, at another spot. And then it wasn't getting no gas at all. So, took it back off and adjusted it where I thought it should be. And I didn't check the fuel level. I'm used to doing a fuel level, not just a float height, where you can actually measure how much fuel's in the bowl. But there's... There's not really a way to do it on this bowl unless I make it that way. Um, I wasn't going to do that. So that's about it. Had a nest of wasps up in here under the plate here somewhere. They've been buzzing me all day. I haven't got stung yet. I don't sprayed them once. I think, I don't know where they came from. I guess down around Lumberton, North Carolina, somewhere. And they must not like it up here. Maybe they do like it. Well, we'll see. Tires ain't horrible. Front ones are. They got a little crack to them. These back ones are weather checked a little bit and worn down pretty good. 24s. The top link was missing and I had no rear remotes on it so maybe I'm going to put some rear remotes on there do a rear remote kit don't know yet don't know what I'm going to do with this thing we'll find out alright thank you if you like my content subscribe like, share, comment, all that jazz. If you have any pointers for me, help me out there. I appreciate it. Y'all take care.